But joining us now live from Toronto is Oral Brown. He's a professor of international relations and political science at the University of Toronto. Uh, professor Brown, thanks so much for joining us. First, I, I want to start with uh, China's reactions. Uh, it essentially feels that it's being targeted, you know, you know bullied by the rich kids. Uh, what do you think? Well, it wasn't directly targeted, but clearly China was discussed at greater lengths than at previous G7 meetings. And uh, President Biden wanted to get some kind of consensus. They papered over differences, but they did not resolve the main issues. Now, these are indeed seven wealthy countries, but they are not just any seven wealthy countries. They produce collectively a vast amount of the global GDP, and therefore they carry a great deal of wealth. But the unity that they projected was six main points that they touched on. That unity may prove to be rather ephemeral. But, but it, it does suggest, given how much focus they had on uh, China in the language and the discussion and creating something to offset the Belt and Road Initiative, that the G7 did see China as effectively either its uh, competitor or its enemy or whatever language you'd like to use, but there was a disproportionate focus on the People's Republic. There was considerable focus on uh, on China, and if you look at the kind of proposals that were made, such as uh, you know the embrace to embrace the values of the G7, which are all uh, liberal social democracies, that is basically democracy promotion, and that presents an alternate vision of development to that of China. So that clearly is one factor. When they talked about uh, uh, trying to help uh, the economies of other countries recover, that was again to counter the Belt and Road Initiative, that they need to put money in it as well. But was there unity on that? Well, when you look at it a little bit more closely, then you will see that there were significant differences. The approach that is taken by Germany is very different from that of the United States. Germany sells a lot of luxury cars, for example, BMWs and Mercedes uh, Benzes in China. They do not want to endanger that. Uh, the Germans do not want to see a new kind of Cold War. And uh, Germany carries the greatest weight within the EU. So those differences have not been resolved. And even though the atmospherics were very positive, this was not Mr. Trump, who tends to be confrontational and bombastic, and there was a lot of goodwill. The various members of the G7 wanted to demonstrate that they appreciate the softer and more accommodating language. And these some of the concessions that were made by President Biden. It's something else that they would change actual policy, whether it's on trade, whether it is on uh, uh, greater foreign aid and investments in less developed countries in Africa, how speedily that would be done, uh, whether it would be on climate change. On climate change, for example, uh, there are very ambitious goals that were laid out, uh, such as being carbon neutral by 2050. Given the current pace of change, that would be very difficult to reach. So these were some of the areas of agreement. We see those highlighted in the communique that was issued. What about the, the disagreement between the seven leaders? Well, there, there clearly were certain disagreements because, uh, uh, as I noted, Germany does not have the same economic vision as as United States. Uh, uh, Macron, uh, Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, would like to see closer, better relations with Russia. And as it was noted, uh, President Biden uh, has uh, a meeting coming up in Geneva on Wednesday with uh, Vladimir Putin, and President Biden has used very inflammatory language. He had concurred that uh, Vladimir Putin is a killer. He has declared that he's not going to let uh, Russia get away with the kind of things that he claims Russia got away with. And so there's a sharp contrast between the approach between uh, France on the one hand, the United States on the other. And speaking of contrast, of course, uh, sharp contrast between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. This is Biden's first meeting with these leaders. Uh, the dynamicism must have been quite different. I remember Trump sort of walking out of the G7 in Canada before a communique could be issued. How did the Biden element play out differently among the leaders? There was a sense of relief, obviously. You could see it in the eyes of Angela Merkel. 
that she was very happy that she was not meeting with Donald Trump, who did not hold her in high regard. Angela Merkel is leaving in September. Uh, but these atmospherics only take you so far. If you look closely at what Biden is saying, it is not that different from the America First policy. He wants fairer trade. By that he means he wants the Europeans to make trade concessions. He wants to shift attention away to the Pacific. That will not benefit the Europeans. He has frozen defense spending. That will uh, place a greater burden on the Europeans. So these issues are likely not only to keep percolating, but they become more aggravated as uh, they get down to really hard negotiations. In a sense, this was the easy part. This was to project an image of unity, to have these declaratory statements that all sound very positive. Implementation, however, is a vastly more difficult task. And when it comes to this kind of implementation, whether it is on climate change, whether it is on investment uh, into the less developed countries and how effective those investments would be, that would be a very difficult test. Professor Oral Brown from uh, University of Toronto, thank you for your insight. You're welcome.